All right, we're going to take the couple of quick videos here to just talk about the basics of some of the Photoshop essentials, such as what is a pixel, what is color, what is bit depth, what are the different color modes in Photoshop, and how do they differ. So we're going to start off here with just looking at a simple idea of what is a pixel. Now, I've just got a simple image up here, and it's got some reds and some greens and some blues and some nice different shades here. I'm just going to zoom in all the way. I'm going to grab my zoom tool here on keyboard Z for the shortcut and just come in here and go all the way in. Now I've got my pixel grid turned on. So if you zoom in in Photoshop and you don't see this white lines, you go to your view menu down to show and over to pixel grid. Now I typically like to work with pixel grid turned off, but I've got it turned on here because it really illustrates and shows you each individual pixel of your Photoshop document. And if I zoom out here, I can pick another image area here, maybe some of these greens and the trees here and zoom in and you can see all the different values and shades of the greens and the individual pixels that are illustrated there. Now in my document here, if I go to image, image size, you can see that I'm working with a document, I'll switch over here to pixels, that is 1200 pixels wide and 900 pixels tall. Basically what that means is if I count each individual box, one, two, three, four, five, six, and go all the way over to the edge of my canvas, there's going to be 1,200 little boxes. A simple illustration is to think about pixels. If you look at a window, look at the screen, uh, the screen portion of a window, and that's basically what we're seeing here. Each of those little boxes inside of a window screen is sort of maybe a pixel, if you will. And your eye sort of interprets each of those individual boxes, and when you zoom out, you can see the entire composite image, and your eye blends them all together so it looks seamless, and you can't see the individual boxes. But of course, if we zoom in, we can see the individual pixels. Now, on modern devices, typically the resolution of the device, or the pixel density rather, essentially how many teeny tiny boxes are squished into a, an inch of space, is really high. Um, in the last 15, 20 years, they've made quite a few advances in being able to sort of shrink those pixel sizes down so small that they're almost indistinguishable. Um, for example, your smartphone devices have up to four to 500 pixels in a single inch of physical space. Um, five, 10 years ago, the highest you would see was maybe around 110, 120. So they've made quite a few advances um, in that. A typical resolution for an old monitor, maybe 96 or 72 even. But depending on your device, you're gonna get a lot more pixels today. So most of the smartphones that are all coming out are super high pixel density devices and even some of the laptops and desktop monitors as well. So I'm gonna turn off this picture really quick. I'm just gonna turn on this uh, uh, picture right here. Now, if we think about each of those individual boxes, if you sort of look down here, each individual pixel is one of these white squares that I've illustrated on the screen here. Now, if I zoom in here, let me actually just go back one second here. I'm gonna turn this one back on and I'm gonna zoom in. Now we can see, I'm gonna go to a color portion here. We can see that each area, go up here to some of these greens, each individual pixel has a unique hue or a different color. Now we're gonna talk about in just in a second how we determine how many colors each pixel can be and about bit depth and, and color modes and a few things like that. But basically, each individual pixel, pixel in this instance can be one of 16 and a half million colors, roughly, because I'm working in a typical 24-bit uh, Photoshop document. So each individual box can be one of those 16 and a half million colors. Now, my display, my actual physical monitor, or the monitor you're looking at right now and watching this video, is made up of pixels as well, and the pixels on your monitor look like this. So here we have a couple of different layouts of varying hardware. Now this top left box is showing us what a, this is the old cathode ray tube TVs that you would have seen, they're almost like a big piece of furniture. They're big and they're long and they're wide. They look like this. And so each individual pixel is made up of three colors. That's the way all, all uh, RGB and pretty much 99% of all devices out there um, are made. So there's a red, a green, and a blue pixel. And by combining varying intensities 
um, of this light, we can replicate oranges and yellows and purples and magentas and cyans and all sorts of different colors. So this is an old CRT. Here we have the old PC CRT. So this would be your old computers that used to have those big long monitors. Um, you know, there they have circles and they're arranged a little bit different. Here's an LCD. This is the liquid crystal displays, which is your typical flat panel display. And then down here, you see I've actually shown you, here's a single pixel, here's a single pixel. And so we have, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, et cetera, et cetera. So each individual pixel on your physical display, depending on the manufacturer and when it was made and who does it, but it has essentially three color um, light emitting elements. So that they're gonna shine these three different hues and by varying the amount of light that they push through these three light bulbs, if you will, we can replicate a lot of different colors. So that's the basics of the way that Photoshop pixels work in your device pixels. And if I come over here and I'm gonna turn on one more box here. So here I've just got a standard circle, if you will, that I've drawn inside of Photoshop. But this circle I've drawn without um, any anti-aliasing applied which means that the edges of the circle, here it looks cylindrical, but if I zoom in all the way to the pixel level, again, here you can see that grid, you can see that here's two over, and then it's one, 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 and then two over, and then one, 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 and here it's two down. And it's sort of this jagged looking edge all the way around the edge of this circle. And that's because you can't represent a round object using square pixels, it just doesn't work. You have to completely fill up every single pixel with a color, which leaves you with jagged edges. So to compensate for this problem of basically square pixels, which all um, devices use some sort of rectangular pixel formation, uh, we have a term what's, that's known as anti-aliasing. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna sort of draw another circle. So I'm gonna turn this layer off. I'll grab my circle tool over here I'll grab a shape here, and I'll make sure that I, uh, when I create this shape, I don't have my anti-aliasing turned off, which I have it on. It should be on by default in Photoshop. So I'm going to create another circle. Whoops, this time I'm actually going to turn off the stroke and turn this back to black on the fill. And with this circle, let's go ahead and zoom in. Now, it looks roughly the same here. The two circles look pretty much the same. But when I zoom in on this new one, you'll see that it's anti-aliased and you'll see exactly what that looks like right here. So you can see that instead of having these solid jagged edges, Photoshop went ahead and it made some pixels slightly gray and some less transparent, more, or I guess, more white, I guess we could say, or less black, however you wanna put that, along the edge all the way down of this entire circle. So depending on where we're at inside of the circle, we're gonna get different levels. Here you can see use one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, instead of those solid jagged edges of before. And that is what is known as anti-aliasing. So it makes the circle appear more smooth without any jagged edges, as opposed to the original. You can sort of see some of those little teeny tiny jagged edges. So anti-aliasing is a feature that sort of helps square pixels look round or, or enable to show round shapes.